Welcome back to another episode of Hobby Time in the Murder Basement, where today I sit down and talk with Peter and Simon from CreatureCaster. If you are a listener of this podcast in podcast form, you are going to want to ha- hop on over to YouTube and check it out because they tease some really cool upcoming models and unfortunately have already burnt a new hole in my wallet. Check it out. Today, I am absolutely uh, thrilled to be talking to the uh, head of Creature Caster, one of my favorite miniature creators uh, in the entire hobby. Uh, I have uh, an unfortunate unpainted collection of your stuff and like half painted pieces. But uh, every time you guys release a new model, I throw it in a cart. It comes. I can't help it. I'm addicted to your stuff. Peter, Simon, thank you so much for joining me today in the murder basement. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having us here, Heath. It's it's great, and uh, we are super happy to hear that you love the collection. That's uh, that's awesome. <laughs> the, there's this really cool thing that, like, seeing, you know, I think it was Kenny from Next Level Painting work on some of them, or maybe like early Spiky Bits stuff, where you're just like, what are these things? nobody is doing stuff like this right now uh especially in like kind of the the uh renaissance of boutique resin uh you you all have managed to instead of um you know following in suit with other companies really like carved your own path and uh like can you can you kind of explain like how creature came creature caster came about and like like how it has shaped up into what it is today. Sure, yeah. I mean, Creature Caster started um, as kind of like the brainchild of uh, a good friend of ours, Jeremy, and um, and he sort of took it into a Kickstarter back in in 2013, and that was sort of when it it had its first chance of becoming a success. It was it was a really interesting time um, in the hobby community, right? Kickstarter was a pretty new thing. Um, and and it just got a lot of momentum. It, it hit at the right time, and and it was uh, and had fantastic sculpts. He, he's an amazing artist, um, and so that's you know like really where everything started for Creature Caster, and um, and then from there, uh, me and Simon joined during the Kickstarter, and and um, it's grown like massively since then, right? Like we we've gone from having that Kickstarter seed into creating a company that has, you know, has the goal of, and we're really close to it, releasing a model a month. And, and so, you know, that's from very early on, that was always one of our goals is we wanted to get you know, a new release every month out to people. And that's, and we wanted to be able to release, you know, stuff that was unique, was our own, you know, it had a lot of inspiration from a variety of, of different companies and, you know, especially GW, like a lot of us have been inspired from that um sure. but we really wanted to start kind of like carving our own niche within that and the way we looked at it was that demons were a great opportunity to do that because there's you know there's a lot of ways you can interpret what a demon could be um and and we were like if we if this is our focus you know it really gives us tons of ability to have creativity and and to kind of make it our own um and and so that's kind of what we're known for we're known for these big demon models that are are pretty crazy pretty unique um and really really detailed and and that's what you know the goal was from the beginning so we're kind of that's where we're at now and and we're sort of like okay that's a great foundation um and where are we going to go next i guess is is sort of (laughs) where we're at (laughs) anything you want to add to that simon no, um, other than maybe uh, uh, Pete and I have been friends for about 25 years. We got together at our local game store and uh, we had immediate chemistry. And um, it's, this has been our dream of ours since like 25 years ago. So we've been, uh, we're living the dream now. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, awesome. So how, how chaotic was it hopping in the middle 
uh, into a new company, a brand new company in the middle of a Kickstarter, which is uh, at the time, like, I think by then, May Kingdom Death might have just had their full, like, like big push, which was like, nobody saw that coming, you know, like this crazy, like you could spend two grand on, you know, resin and a game that was like half, half thought out at the point that if that Kickstarter came on, like, how was that time as, as a, a place to be working in the hobby? You want to start there, Simon? Uh, yeah. So Jeremy approached me and I was fairly new to what was going on. He, I was going to 3D school at the time and he approached me with a lot of these ideas and offered um, for me to take over a lot of the production for it. And obviously I was really excited to work with him. Um, and, but it was pretty insane. Uh, I don't like the, the logistics of everything. I didn't really recognize the amount of work that was required to bring this Kickstarter to fruition. Um, luckily, my good friend Pete uh, <laughs> just uh, <laughs> just uh, finished school, and um, I, I knew since I knew, knew his background and his abilities for a lot, like just his logistical skills. I asked him to join us, and um, luckily he was able to get the logistics together to formulate a plan to figure out how we're going to finish this Kickstarter. And we went crazy. And um, it was an insane six months of nonstop work between um, our another one of our colleagues, Mitch, Peter, myself, right? So it was it was uh, it was an insane amount of work at that time. But uh, I, love I wouldn't Mitch, give it by up. The way. <laughs> Mitch cracks me up. I got to meet him last year. And yeah. uh, he he's my type of people like his personality i was just like yeah yeah i dig this guy yeah, <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's, our, he's a great guy he's our designated drinker for the company <laughs> <laughs> yeah me and, me and simon are both kind of teetotalers but Mitch takes care of that for us you know like there's that thing is like the older that you get the harder it is to be to be that person so you have to you have to keep someone like who is that around you so they can be the person to schmooze the people who are like into the hard partying which is something that uh i didn't really understand conventions are kind of like based around like how how you get everybody in a room and have them like interact with each other uh, it's it's always crazy ah the man the myth the legend <laughs> <laughs> hello <laughs> what are we doing here <laughs> what's up mitch how you doing today welcome to the murder basement <laughs> hello thank you. you you guys met um where did you guys meet anyways uh, we met at a uh, uh, Warfare Weekend uh, ah, last year oh, in yeah, St. Right. Louis. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice. Nice. I'm trying to get the reps to come down. Yeah, I'm gonna go I, back to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but That's yeah, awesome. I mean, I think it was a really weird time uh, to be doing this sort of type of Kickstarter. Um, there weren't nearly as many companies doing miniatures or miniature production, and I, I think it was. Um, and, and, you know, we made a really tough decision, which was that we were going to do all the production ourselves, right? That we wanted to have <laughs> the control of that. And, you know, it came from, you know, Jeremy had gotten samples from a bunch of different companies and he had been like unhappy with some of the samples. And, um, and so, you know, we were like very just learning uh, about resin casting. So th there's like an entire thing of teaching ourselves you know stuff that other people might have been doing for the last 20 years and sure. um and and putting our own spin on it and, and trying to you know perfect some things that we thought were like maybe not that good about it um so you know we really got to innovate a lot because we didn't have um that background but it was a it was definitely a bit of a struggle figuring things out um and really? and yeah we were already running sort of a little bit late on the um on on you know when we had said we were going to deliver right and so sure. you know by the time we realized hey we're not really going to be able to outsource this source this we were already kind of like supposed to be delivering the models so there's a whole <laughs> thing of trying to manage um expectations of what the community had of, of when they were going to when when we were going to get these and for the most part you know, 90% of people are super patient, super cool, um, yeah. and, and there'll be there'll be 10% that are unhappy and um, and that you're you know really trying to 
uh, work with those 10% to be like, hey, you know, what can we do to, to make you happy again? Yeah. <laughs> and we mostly succeeded. You know, I think uh, at the end of the day, we're really proud of what we accomplished, but it was a bit of a rocky road. That's for well, sure. And, and that was in the the era of fine cast for GW, right? Correct? That, that totally, yeah, everybody absolutely. right now yeah. was like terrified of resin because of that. And, uh, yeah. and there hadn't been people proving that resin is like a very beautiful sculpting uh, tool and you know gives you some of the best detail especially like I, ha I have some early fine cast stuff that it is so green stuff together you're just like I there's not much of a real model here <laughs> you know? I think the problem with Absolutely. the fine cast was they were trying to do certain processes and use certain fillers in a like there it seems like they're trying to do a spin cast system with with resin and it just didn't work right, right so right. Need so a vacuum just, for sure. Yeah, so it was just kind of this strange, uh, and you know they're moving away from it anyways, right? Because you know that. But <laughs> I think most of the hobby community realized that that's what they were doing, and that's why the quality was low. Right? Sure, so, sure. Yeah. Well, and what were the models that you did for the Kickstarter? Because I remember when I first started looking at creature caster stuff, there was uh a couple dragons like it seemed like majority of dragons which uh were all super cool uh and then maybe the start of the demon line i think the tree the tree woman was made and the tree like the ants were kind of there like what what were you guys working on in that kickstarter the... yeah definitely the four dragons we had four dragons that came out of the kickstarter so that was the emperor uh the zombie the possessed and the mountain dragon um, yeah. So there's the four big dragons, there was the tree walker, and then uh, we sort of had the spider demon, the pincer demon, the warrior demon, uh, the vulture demon, and plague angel. Maggot demon, plague angel. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else is in there? There's a few others, I think, too. Uh, I think there's a total of eight demons, right? So, um, yeah. Might so those. Be missing one. Yeah. <laughs> It's starting to get the collection starting to get a little bit bigger now, right? So, yeah, right. Uh, some some of the original parts, like a lot of those, a lot of those models were cut overseas. So even during the casting process, we found it very difficult to. But it all the difficulty led to some innovations. We had to like really figure out special ways of making sure these worked. Um, luckily, now that we do most of the cuts in house, which is amazing, because now we have a lot more control over what's going on. And that was a that was a big turning point for our company too. Is when we got our three D technology, three D printing technology in the house. Nice. Yeah, by cuts we mean the way the models like are are broken into pieces. So yeah, what what happened was um, that all got outsourced because that was something that uh, Jeremy wasn't familiar with, and and then the three D prints got made. We didn't have a three D printer during the Kickstarter, and so you know when me and Simon were working on things, we kind of had these three D prints that were given to us. And it was like, a, a, you had to take this, uh, you know, there, there was no opportunity to change anything. There's no opportunity to reprint yeah, anything. Crazy. So that those were not easy um, pieces to work with. And I think uh, one of the things we're happiest about now is how much of we do in-house. So like everything is in-house now. We we have a team, uh, we, we have our art team, we have the, the sculptors and, and the artist in that. Um, and myself kind of sits in, in the art team. Uh, we have like the mastering, we have all the 3D printing and the mastering, and that's sort of Simon and, and Mitch's wheelhouse there handling that. Um, and, you know, we so we take everything from a concept, which we generate, we sculpt it, we cut it and 3D print it, we master it, and then we produce it, and everything happens in-house. So we have like the total control from start to finish of uh, the quality of the product and so and, and the nice thing too is like the Kickstarter did like build this business which is amazing as well too right like there's a lot of pain but all that pain actually led to where we are today so you know the suffering is was part of the process <laughs> <laughs> yeah and anyone who backed us you know we're, yeah. we're super thankful right because yeah. um yeah they were with us for that rocky road and but it, it has allowed this you know company to emerge and and hopefully they're proud of you know helping us build that because we wouldn't be here uh, without the people who who stuck with the Kickstarter so well it seems like you guys have uh, a super loyal fan base and I'm always because because I am 
more the hobbyist and less the player, I'm always really surprised at how many people haven't seen your models. Uh, mm -hmm. And so like last year I was doing an es escalation league at uh, a, a 40K of which I was like, bringing uh you know a queen of ecstasy as a keeper of secrets and uh you know i saw the preview for the uh like the twins of desire and i was like oh like that's gonna be my celeste i'm gonna do these things i'm like i'm i'm using these as my counts as and so i i'm bringing out you know the little matriarchs on the table and everybody's like where the hell are you getting these because i think everybody was kind of used to like the the raging heroes sort of model of which I don't think uh, at least here in St. Louis has the the same sort of love but like when they when people would like pick up the models and like it was almost always that they couldn't help themselves they're like give me this and they would start looking at it and I was like yeah dude they're awesome they're absolutely amazing and I, I think it was really surprising people uh just the, the quality of the models that you guys brought which um is is so cool to see but like how how do you guys as a like a collectible miniatures company like how how do you try to market to people that might be using it like i know you do the like spiky bits and get like the the creators uh to like pay attention but it, it seems like there is like a big void there that you guys could like totally fill <laughs> Good question. <laughs> right? We, yeah, we re recently started to fill that void. Um, uh, one of the things that really suffered for us was since we're a small but dedicated team was our marketing. And um, we really try to work with it, but the, you know, the budget had to allow that. And sure. recently, recently we um, got a couple two new members to our marketing team. And I think you'll see big, a big difference in the upcoming year, uh, how we portray ourselves in the cool. in the community right so and um one of them is um one of them works with play on so like uh, play on tabletop is a uh, is a show where you see uh, it takes a new like bow report system and um it's sh seen a lot of popularity so uh and i met him through the one of the leads on the team i met him through one of the uh tournament scenes and i could just tell that this guy knew what he was doing and um, he's now helping us market. So you'll see some great things from us in the near future. That's yeah. awesome. That, that's great to yeah. hear. Uh, how, how does creature caster? So, and I, this is a, a question equally as, a, you know, maybe sensitive for Jason and monument hobbies. Uh, but like for, for you guys, like, uh, like monument hobbies is like your face right now, which is really interesting because like they do pro acryl and the brushes. Uh, and when people ask them about the models, even myself have made that mistake. They're just like, you have to talk to Peter, you have to talk to that. And, and it, it's really interesting how you have like two, two monoliths, you know, like next to each other, but your guys' roles have been totally reversed uh, as far as public facing uh, uh, goes. And, and maybe to the strength and weakness of everything and, may, and maybe to the endearing aspect of it, because it shows like that you guys are still like a cottage industry working with uh, companies, you know, that align with your values. And that's something that I found really interesting that like I found Jason long before I realized that he wasn't creature caster. Mm. <laughs> right. Yeah, so I think there's um, there's been like we we uh, formed Monument Hobbies as well with Jason, like me and Simon, um, and my friend Graham and Jason and Jan are, are the founding uh, members of Monument Hobbies, and, and oh, so okay. we kind of built Monument Hobbies up together. And um, you know, it's a it's a bit of a circumstance where like Monument Hobbies has started to have success, and and really is looking at creating their own identity that is separate from Creature Caster. So you know, we were kind of sort of more intermeshed to begin with and and now we're kind of like really trying to establish each company as having its its own branding um sure. and there's you know a lot of things going on there where we're figuring out how that is going to work and and you know whether we're comfortable with it for creature caster you know we have never um we've never really looked at marketing as um trying to put our, our face on everything or trying to brand everything as being ours or, or taking things over. Like for, for us, we've always wanted to work with the community that already exists. So, you know, we have 
that's why we have the partners program and that's how, why we have these different initiatives and we are putting our money into the community right so you know we don't want to take out big facebook ads we don't want to take out um all of these other things or, or we don't want to pay somebody to stream full time for us right because <laughs> right. um because if we're doing that you know we're actually taking away from from maybe what some of the other streamers are doing so we've always looked to work with that and integrate with that and in a lot of ways that was why uh, we worked with Jason to start Monument Hobbies in the first place, right? It was that um, he was a member of the community. He was doing something that we felt aligned with us. And, and so we wanted to kind of like work something out with him, right? And and that was sure. um, how Monument started. And um, but yeah, like I think things have, have changed a little bit in that area as to that the companies sort of need to kind of create a little bit more of a separate face, establish that, you know, they're not the same company. Um, and, and that's kind of like what we're looking at as we move forward with Monument is exactly how that's all going to shake itself out. Um, and for Creature Caster, again, that's not, we don't, we don't want to be the streamer. We want to work with people who are already streamers, who are already socially influencing um, people who love our product. So, you know, and that's something that is actually a, an unbelievable amount of work, which we weren't <laughs> expecting. <laughs> so, so when we say, you know, like we're expecting to see um, a lot more marketing and a lot more things from uh, our marketing department, who's by, run by TAC and Emma right now, um, is really we're reaching out to all the partners again. We're trying to like re um, reinvigorate that program. You know, we had a sure. bunch of people who came on and we realized like, hey, this is it's hard to communicate with people. Like, you know, sometimes we'll send up newsletters and and people aren't even getting them right. And and so you know, we're really looking at. Um, creating a community with the partners, working with the partners so that they can talk about our products and um, make it feel like a really enriching and rewarding experience. Um, and so that's kind of always been part of CreatureCaster's goal is, you know, one, to approach things differently. Like, like we you know, have kind of like our core statements and we like to be innovative as we approach things. So we're like, you know, we don't see many other companies um, reaching out in the way that we're trying to reach out to the community and yeah. um and two is just to build community like you know we have a, a commitment to doing that um and and so we thought the best way of doing that is to work with um other people who are probably who are doing it already who are have the expertise with it and um you know sort of are are really going to be able to do better than we're going to do anyway right so yeah um and and we've really enjoyed that we really enjoyed being able to do that outreach um and i think right now we have around 100 partners and we just kind of realized that you know that you know if you want to spend uh, a minute a day with people that's that's 100 minutes a day and and you know so <laughs> it's actually becomes a pretty big amount of work to, yeah. to try and get all that going but it's something we're really committed to and, and you know so that's where you'll see us spending most of our marketing uh, budget is going to be on working with the community so yeah well it's it's been really interesting ever since i started doing like the uh content creation aspect of uh of this which was never my intention uh i i kind of got uh uh coerced into doing it of which is not not the worst thing in the world, but it is it it is what happened. Everybody, because I started working like solely on like conquest, conquest, last argument of kings models and creature caster stuff. Everybody just assumed I was part of the creature creator thing, and it, it took me like a month to realize that they were actually talking about a program that you have partnered up with content creators, and I was just like everybody's like oh yeah Heath has to be a part of this and I was like yeah I'm totally a creature creator I don't know what you're talking about but like yeah yeah that's me and so like I kind of fronted my way into a couple different conversations to realize that like I like whatever this community is and in any way I can help it because because I believe in the the product and the company like whatever I can do like I I, I it is rare to find like companies that do stuff like this in the world that are creative but also like 
you know, as far as I can tell, like financially solvent and aren't like constantly like crashing like the plane into the bottom of the mountains as they're going over. Like it seems like you guys are being really smart with your company. And that's something that I like like to get behind as a small business owner, seeing you guys being fashion forward and flexible and, uh, you know, uh, looking at the the landscape as far as like this is what we want to do we have a goal and we're going going to achieve it to me that that's just like yeah let's shout it from the rooftops so that like i can get behind that and that's super cool so you guys are currently reworking the creature creator program what are some of the things that you're doing there oh so really one of the big things is we're going to be creating a facebook group that is just for the creators because we want to have better ways of communicating um <laughs> And, and so once we have that, we're going to try and, and bring all the creators into that Facebook group. And then you're going to see us talking to the creators a lot more about, um, about the ideas that we have. So, you know, kind of one of the first things we did was we had the Death Elemental was one of the, one of the first models that we started talking to the community <laughs> about. And, and we, we asked the creators to help us choose what the weapon options were going to be for that model and, and things like that. So, you know, we want to see the creators helping us make the company into the company that they want it to be that we want to see the sculpts that yeah you know, and we we think that the creators are you know it's almost like um a democratic system right where the creators <laughs> represent their viewers and and so you know they're going to take the viewers who like the creator are going to support that creator and that sure. creator is going to kind of have some of the same views as as their audience so um because of that we feel like you know having this variety of creators we get this sort of democracy of views right and and so you know we're not um and, and so that's one of the things that we're really excited about is, is having the creators help us create things. Um, and then the second thing that we're excited about is we're really getting a lot more structure around our model releases now. So, um, you know, we know that we're on a, a certain production cycle. It's taken us a while to figure out exactly what that production cycle is. But it means that we're going to be able to get um, the our first cast of the model are going to go out to a certain number of creators basically a month in advance of the release. So, and then we're going to make announcements as to <laughs> Simon is sneaking in a queen of onslaught there. You maybe yeah. you might have to uh, talk about that soon. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, the, you know, the model is going to go out to the creators so that they'll have an entire month um, to potentially stream that. And they're going to be the ones who are announcing these models to the world right like we're going to not really start doing any um, media pushes or anything like that until we're able to coordinate the creators together till we're able to make a post that says hey if you want to see this model go see the creators right so you know we are going to want to push our traffic um, towards seeing what the creators are doing and and having the creators really be that launch platform for nice. um for our models so so that's something that we're really focused on as we start going into the end of this year and, and into 2021 um and i think the other thing that we're wanting to do is have more events that we can kind of do with the creators so you know we're we're gonna try and plan something where sort of every creator um is able to have an event um that once a year they can be like hey we would like to do a promotion you know it could be it's my birthday stream and i, I want to give something away and so we want to work with creators kind of once a year so that they can have something special that they're doing so um, those are kind of like all the all the things that we really want to see integrated into the program and and you know we're also looking at opening up applications again for people who are interested in that and we're not quite sure where we're going to cap the numbers um but yeah, like I think we're already sort of every third day with the number of event number of creators we have, you know, you're gonna there's gonna be a creator event happening somewhere in the world. So we think that's kind of a uh, cool. Mitch, <laughs> give us like a month because our market team is pretty backed up with a lot of stuff to do. So <laughs> we we'll just uh, be a little bit careful. Yeah, I uh, when I filled that uh, emailed about it, somebody sent me a, an email that was like a little antagonistic like what can you bring to this and i was like oh well let me tell you this and like i kind of like like i was like oh, how, how do i flex on this without being a total douche hole like what what am i gonna do and uh and i just was like 
I just really like what you guys do. Whenever this is open, please contact me. I I want to be a part of uh of this uh company in any in any shape or or, or fashion. So what what does a release sort of look like? How does how does that start? How do you get your pieces? And like like have you ever had that moment of like halfway through the process of making your molds and getting this together? You realize that this is like wrong and like how do you guys keep the the quality so high because like it it to to an untrained person it seems totally fucking effortless which is like that's the illusion that you want to like give but i have done creative stuff i know that like the behind the scenes thing is messy it's painful it's frustrating there are sleepless nights there are all yeah, sorts of are. things in there yeah like our team works for like especially like our core team works especially hard. Everybody actually works really hard in our team. That's that's just, that's just a given. Um, sure. The luckily Peter has kind of formulated a plan for us to like spread out the time. So our even our production cycles are getting a little more clean. So we're given more time. If there's mistakes that are made. Um, you know, we use a lot of tools and um, apparatus to like make sure that uh, things are done really well. We have enough time to start checking fits. Mitch is great at all the fits are done by our colleague Mitch to make sure that these things are go together really well. Um, so you know, as as like every every month we just improve on our process, and we're just learning from past experiences. And since you're since we're immersed in it twenty four seven, pretty much other than sleep, it uh, you just start <laughs> learning tricks and learning from your mistakes, right? So. That's kind of um, where where we've kind of like learned how to do it. Just the sheer amount of time we spend doing it. Yeah, I, and I think you know, there's there's been some horror stories like like the Lady of Strife. Uh, if anyone looks at the Lady of Strife, she originally had like these long flowing sort of tentacle uh, hair locks that that was going on, and um, and we got to the casting phase and we were trying to make these things work and we could make them work so we had to you know re-sculpt the head and sculpt the head that didn't have any of those tentacles on reprint it yeah. and and you know and those are all things that they you know when i say we're aiming for a model a month it, it does we, we're not hitting a model a month and the reason why we don't hit a model a month is because of those learning things that that we're learning we're just getting way uh so we've also realized almost inevitably for us we don't like releasing things unless we feel it's as close to perfect as we can get it. And because of that, you know, we were like, hey, we, we should be able to do this turnaround in two months is, is, you know, where we were originally at. And, you know, sit from there, we've gone to be like, okay, we need to give ourselves four months to do a turnaround uh, on a piece because if there, anything goes wrong, you know, we are going to have to go back to stage one because we're not going to release it. So, um, and, you know, that's because we are a company that doesn't have a rule set, which is, I know, something that we want to talk about yeah. here, but um, we survive on the quality of our sculpts. That That's the only thing that Creature Caster survives on, and we're proud of that. And, and you know, even when we're looking at the future, when we're like, hey, you know, we want to get to a point <clears throat> where we're offering more than, than just the sculpt to our customers, um, we still want, for whatever model we release, that it would sell if there was nothing else associated with it, right? Because like that's the quality that we're focused on as a company is that you know people are buying this just for how good the sculpt is or just for how good um, that art is. And and you know maybe in the future they're buying it because they love the lore and 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 you know we've we've captured their imaginations and they want to represent this character and you know they would buy it even if it if it was looking like an orc from the 80s, right? You know. Um, yeah. <laughs> so so. But we don't ever want to see that happen, right? Because we're super focused on on the quality of those sculpts, and um, I don't think that's ever going to change for us. So, and really, we're proud because any single model we've released, we felt has been better in some aspect than the previous models. You know, whether it was the technical aspect or the, you know, we we did something super crazy with uh, chains flying through the air, uh, as will happen with the <laughs> Simon. Simon has to deal with a lot of my. <laughs> I want this to happen, Simon. 
make it happen. So yes, he, he figures out a lot of those uh, problems, but yeah, there's uh, there's some magic happening on some of those things that just defy gravity. Oh yourself. man, it's, <sighs> there's there's a lot of like back and forth between Peter and I. Like, oh, you did it to us again. I see, right? But it's kind of nice to have someone pushing the pushing the boundaries for us, right? So. Like I totally leave off all the extra stuff on my uh, Queen of Ecstasy because like I was like I don't I don't want to paint that like I, <laughs> when I saw it, I was like it looks super cool but like no like I don't know how to do it right and do it well so like I'm just gonna leave them off and uh, and while it does make me a little sad I'm also like I dodged a huge bullet. <laughs> Uh, when we do have those models, we started getting Mitch working on assembly videos. Like that's something we also part of our marketing is is we want to do things that are adding value to customer experience as well. So as we as we do our marketing, you'll see um, we're really gonna try and get painted for every single ones. If if we're able to, we'll start doing painting tutorials for every single one of our models. Um, and you're gonna see those assembly guides and our recommendations for you know the hair is is you should pin it, paint it separately and, and then pin it on. And, and we kind of are wanting to have those videos and, and have that as part of our marketing as well. So that it's like actual valuable content. Uh, yeah, so. well, I, I think Mitch explained it to me as like, uh, cause you just, when I met him, you guys had just released the, the uh, Queen of Arcana, you know, the, the big Queen of Malifica. Yeah, yeah, Queen Malifica. It's yeah. w w one of the most stunning sculpts, in, like in person. When I when I first saw that, I was like rendered speechless. I could, I, I was just like, how? How? I does painted. It looks amazing. If you just sit it on your shelf, it's just like it sits there. Sometimes I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah, and and like I showed it to people, and they're like, hundred and thirty dollars. That seems a little high. It's like. Dude, no, this seems really low. When you see this in person, this the, the value is more than there. <laughs> Just like mm -hmm. take that leap. And uh, but then like Mitch was like, Yeah, you guys are gonna have to paint this in like sub assemblies. Like otherwise there's just stuff that you're not gonna get done. <laughs> yeah, and we really, you know, so with her, we were really wanted a showcase model, and we were worried because we were like maybe we're going too complex <laughs> with this <laughs> with this model um but uh but we wanted like something that no one had done right and we were like how far can we push ourselves um and so that's the model where it's like you know it's got a label on it that says don't try this unless you're an expert right <laughs> so it's a it's, it's a yeah, fair amount of work bring yeah, that out for and, that one <laughs> and, and yeah it's but it's it is something we're again really proud of and yeah, um, yeah we're selling the dream right like we it's just like for people that really want that imagery that's beyond the norm that's what we're selling right so but we have also talked about that particular faction in the lore is um you know kind of like a master of disguise and and has you know the the queen of malefica herself is built out of these tentacles right so she's not really the human shell is just just a shell like she's she's actually this weird tentacle beast thing um and so you know we want to represent that by sort of having different stages of their ev of their evolution as well so for the the queen of malefica and the king of malefica when he releases you know we're, we're hoping to create um sort of a more simplified version that is like before they reach their their ultimate evolution so uh because we want people to be able to you know, purchase parts for that faction uh, without it being terribly overwhelming. So, so you know, like if they're if they're not ready to take on the Queen of Malefica, we want to have a um, a slightly simpler version that might yeah. Be, There'll be might two be versions better. of the King of Malefica coming out, but and we're just curious to see which one the community is going to want more now, right? So it's like let's see what people want, right? So <laughs> yeah. So uh, I've got I've got two questions. Like you've hinted at lore and you know uh, models without rule sets it's something that uh you know like i asked jason like i was like when are you guys going to like give us rules to play with these things uh because uh you know it, it feels like a bit of a betrayal to have such amazing sculpts just as counts as and I noticed with your Death Elemental, the concept art wasn't just a 3D render of a model. There was more, you did more of like the sketch work with it, but then you showed it in like a environment, which it was kind of one of the first times that I was like 
grabbed that. I was like, they are doing something here that is a little different in, in previous releases. Uh, uh, the new Lady Onslaught has more artwork uh, involved with it. And that is something that, I, like, like, are you... Is this something that you're working on as like a future thing for your product line? Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we've done a lot of kind of um, aligning of where we want to go as a company. We, we've had a lot of internal discussions. And, you know, what is it that we see CreatureCaster being? And and in a lot of ways, we've always, um, you know, the, the Counts as Market is a, a good market for us as a gateway into being able to do our own things so right. really that's um you know just the the honest truth about how we've developed our company um and and what we want to do going forward is for sure have our own rule set we already have a lot of our own lore um that isn't it, it's hard to to explain that to people because there isn't a game behind it or there isn't a product behind the lore so you know we we do like all the little write-ups on our characters um and but that's just a really tiny part of the greater universe that we have envisioned so you know i think we're sitting on something like a hundred pages of information about our universe about our lore about where we want to see that go and um and we're also in the early stages of what we would like to do for a game um so we don't have like a timeline as to when the game might come out um it's sort of like anything that we do we really you know if we're if we release it it we want to make sure that we love it right and um and so finding um finding the time to create all that rule set have it all come together and have the have it all packaged with the lore in in like a really clean manner is going to take us a bit of time um, sure but that is you know where we're going so so every time someone is buying a creature caster model they're supporting that dream right is that you know this is its own universe it's got a lot of depth a lot of lore to it um you know for us our demons are all and you've seen this just with the kings and queens they're they're all um physical beings who have you know different genders they have um a subset of civilization like they, they don't just uh exist as magical energy or something they have civilizations and and there's an entire um story to that that you know how how they function right as as a civilization um and so we're really excited to tell that story because we think it's super cool um and uh it's you're just gonna have to bear with us for a little <laughs> while but but um yeah. and hopefully it's keep supporting us because that's uh, that's what we want to share with you guys. We want to yeah. share our, our feel, vision for this demonic civilization that spans uh, empires, right? So yeah. yeah, we feel like our our like lore and background will be just as cool as our miniatures, and that is like one of the, our, our ultimate visions for the future. The dream Peter and I had 25 years ago when we first met, and it's something that we're moving towards. And now we're past the survival stage; it's becoming more of a reality. All right, so we're very, very happy to feel that way now. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, do you think that you'll do it in stages like maybe an art and lore book before, like a, a world building book? Because like they're even in like uh, you know with D and D being as big as it is right now, you know, fifth edition has got many people who never thought that they get into the hobby or anything of this nature you know really looking at it very differently and like my realization that there's this like uh old school renaissance happening with like basic expert editions of D, D being like fleshed out and like not confusing and like you know so you have things like lamentations of the flame princess doing like dark horror rpg stuff like it with like kind of a standard rpg world like do you think that that is something that you would maybe like world build before you release the game and that way like we're all like just super buzzing about it anyway <laughs> Uh, you know that's that's uh, interesting. It's something that we're oh, discussing internally, right? As to, um, I mean, we're super excited, you know, to see that resurgence of D and D, and we're seeing people paint our models more than ever to use as as D and D boss battles, or you know, um, not so many people using them as player characters. But you know, like there's a, there's a lot of battles that are occurring with uh, with our figures, and um, and you know, like we go to conventions and people will come and tell us their 
stories that they've written around you know their D and D adventure and and you know fighting off our monsters. And yeah, our, a lot of our team are D and D players, right? So I hear sure. the, their their stories all the time and. Um, it's nice to talk to you, Heath, about these kind of things too, right? Because these are some of the thoughts that actually pass through our heads and in our internal conversations. So it just brings some um, foundation to like, yes, this is maybe this is what we maybe should do in some ways, right? So sure. these are the conversations that help. Yeah, well, and it, it's something we wanted to have with the partners as well to, to yeah. see what they think, right? And because, um, you know, as I said, we kind of want to focus on having that complete package when we're ready. Um, but yeah, for sure, there'll be sort of momentum building towards that. And it's just uh, how we do that is is the question, I guess. Sure, sure. Well, it, it's really exciting. Uh, it, you know, just just the idea of it for me, like, I'm just thrilled. I'm absolutely thrilled. And you keep on teasing uh, the lady on slot just to the to the left yes, of the screen yes. for me. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the new models that we can uh, expect to see throughout this year. Uh, specifically, this one. Like, uh, how much of a pain in the ass was it to do the chains? <laughs> how many times have you bled accidentally? Like touching the little spikes because I have definitely actually stabbed myself on things like this. Like, how, <laughs> how was the development of this model? That shows quality. Right, what right? for your model shows quality. Right? <laughs> uh, yes, very, this is probably one of the models that we had in development for the longest. Um, so even, even the sculpt, it was a lot of work to get it exactly how we wanted it to be um so but we're very very happy with her and when the sculpt was done those chains um were handed off to simon and i was like i don't think you're going to be able to do these and he did them so you know like i was pretty <laughs> stoked uh and they are a great addition to just the composition of the model in, in general. We also think about like what is good for hobbyists in general too. So she has another ax option. So it's like, oh, I don't really want to carry this around with me. Uh, maybe you can magnetize the hand uh, for storage purposes and stuff. So we, you know, those are all the things we think about when we're producing these models. We don't magnetize here. We buy a second one. That's that's what we that's want people to attitude. think. Of. Buy, buy a second one. <laughs> Dude, he's always yelling at us. So that, that should be our motto. Instead of like, you know, instead of two thin coats, it's buy two. Buy two of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Magnetize zero. Buy two. Oh shit! So I never realized that like. Coming out of the wings, there are hands there which are absolutely terrifying. Th this model, uh, static, looked really cool, but like I don't think I understood how cool this model looks. It is, you know, it honestly, is stunning. It, it's, it, when we go to Adepticon, it's the, our, one of the few conventions we attend, and we bring our entire range out to show. It is so amazing when people come and see them in person, but since we're an online business, we don't get a lot of uh, the feedback of see seeing people's reactions to the models. And we're so busy at the workshop that it keeps us kind of like isolated in many ways, right? So sure. um, it's just like, it's just so nice to see the, the support you get from the, the community when they're like, oh my God, nothing compares to seeing these in person, right? So, um, and the same, you know, when you see them on a tabletop at tournaments and such, it's like the same experience, right? So, but hopefully you can get some of the 3D dynamicism of this model from the video a little bit right so yeah and the art was really difficult to draw what those wings were so we we knew we had this crazy wing concept that we wanted to to bring to life um that's kind of like these two layers but um yeah that that's not uh that's not an easy thing to represent in the 2d <laughs> no. art and it's oh, no. increased the size of this model for casting purposes massively too and when you the more surface area you add it's just like ink, like it, this is a pretty massive model in its own way for sure so is this price wise going to fall in line with what the the kings and queens are or is it going to be more in that the middle zone she's going to be probably closer to the queen of malefica and and so just to talk about how we do our pricing like our pricing is based around um what it actually costs us to make the model right so mm -hmm. um so we're looking at things like the size of the molds uh how many molds we can we can fit into our equipment and how many models we can produce an hour. So, you know, with the Queen of Malefica, and we were hoping this one was actually going to be um, 
able to fit into smaller molds and, and we'd be able to get a few more an hour. But as Simon <laughs> says, the nature of the wings and the chains yeah. and, and some of the craziness <laughs> that I put in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, he just ups the game every time sometimes. And it's just yeah, like, so, oh my God. <laughs> so, don't don't know, ever stop. Don't ever stop. Don't second please, guess it. Don't. Just just go. Just go. No. It, it's tough, right? Because we wanna we wanna you know we want them to be really cool, but we also um we also want them to be something that can that that people feel like they can take on and that it's not like an impossible challenge or something like that and so there's a nice part about this one is compared to the queen of malefica her assembly is is much much easier right and sure, much much sure. easier to put together and yeah. so we were you know like that's something that we're really happy with and we were hoping to get her in a bit of a, a smaller less expensive package but she's probably going to end up being the same price uh based on you know our what we found so far with the production so yeah, she looks a little bit more petite than some of our other models, but she's actually hefty. And scale, Pete takes a lot of effort to make sure the scales make sense across our range. There's a lot of effort put into, does these make sense across the demon range, right? So uh, a lot of those things are considered when we m are making these models. Sure, sure. So you're now running a pre-order campaign for a, a new model that obviously it's just someone's passion project that like doesn't quite fit into the zone uh a, a, but is uh equally as uh you know inspiring to me the the the, the canuck mara there it is oh my god check it out <laughs> <laughs> everything about this terrifies me it, it is truly wonderful <laughs> Yeah, I think it's it's totally crazy, right? And and you know, so it's something we've always kind of joked about, even from way back in the Kickstarter, that what would be the most ultimate Canadian model that we could make uh, <laughs> as a Canadian company, and and this was it, right? And and you know, um, it was always a bit of a joke. And and then on April Fools, we we kind of like, okay, we'll do this sketch, and and we put it out on April Fools, and you know, the community just blew up about we want this, <laughs> right? We want yeah. this thing. And so we were like, oh, you know, we weren't expecting as many people uh, to <laughs> engage in it. And we're like, are people serious? Do they really want this? And, and you know, um, I guess part of the advantages of having had uh, enough solid releases that we, we have a good, uh, good foundation to build off of. We're like, Let, we, let's take a risk and let's, let's see if we can make this thing. And, and so, you know, we said, even if one person or, orders it, we'll make it. <laughs> um, it's just a question of whether we're going to put it as part of the catalog or, you know, like, and, and then we're like, well, you know, let's kind of do it with a bit of that sort of crowdfunding um, idea behind it, see how that works for us, uh, see what sort of, you know, engagement we get from the community with that type of thing. Um, but yeah, we really didn't want to go into Kickstarter or anything like that. We felt it, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the type of project where we needed a Kickstarter to do it. And, and for us, like part of what we see as the value of Kickstarter is allowing companies who wouldn't be able to make products, make products, right? Like that's right. You know, the original uh, dream of, of the Kickstarter founders. And it's gone a little bit away from that as, as and, and, but, you know, so we're kind of uh, still view it as we don't want to use it unless we think we need it for a specific project to, that, that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Um, yeah. And we were like, you know, we could do this project one way or the other. It's just a question of, um, you know, like, will the community really engage it? And, and how do we measure that? And how do we um, how do we help hype it up? And so I think we're where are we at, Simon? Are we over at 200 pre-orders, right? We're close to 200 right now. We're like, uh, there's been some, some support from... Uh, local painting communities uh, gathering up stuff off our our website, and uh, I think with those with those support with that support, it sh uh, should be about two hundred. Is my guess. Mm -hmm. Th and that's so awesome. If we hit the three hundred goal, this guy will be part of our catalog forever, and anybody who's done the pre-order is going to get a flying beaver. And I mean, who does you not have want a sketch? To do you have a sketch of the flying beaver? Well, uh, that sketch is not going to be revealed till next week. Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh, jeez. No, can't, can't, can't ruin that for people. I, I definitely got my pre-order in yesterday. I had to pay off a credit card before I uh, did did it. Uh, but I was like, this is thrilling and exciting. And especially, um, you know, when 
when you look at other companies like say uh like kingdom death they do things that are like we made a hundred of these we made 150 of these you get one of them you get it like one shot to buy them and then they disappear for forever and uh and then like the aftermarket goes way up on this stuff and you know like as as a consumer of cool stuff like this uh i would yeah. rather have an opportunity to buy it to back it to support it then uh miss out on it and then have you know the fomo and also like have to justify spending like 80 dollars on a piece of resin that i'm never gonna paint because that's yeah. what unfortunately a lot of that stuff has done for me uh where like when i see this like i feel invested in it i feel like i'm part of the process so i i, I super appreciate that that was the way that you guys handled this one because it's it's too cool not to do but like you, you gave the the community the opportunity to have a voice, which I I absolutely love. It it totally allows us to like do things that are not part of our lore building in many ways because we do want to do these kind of crazy different things once in a while because we're a creature caster. So um, with the community support, it allows us to do these things. Yeah. yeah, and doing it as a limited was was a big consideration that we were very close to going that direction because there's a lot more management of pre-orders like when you're doing a pre-order you have th there's more management involved in in that so we were like hey sure. the easy thing is just to do a limited run um but we're really glad we didn't and and so you know now it's it, as many people who want one are going to be able to get one and if there's a and anybody who's because we now hit our first goal that means we're actually going to do another canuck mirror next year and anybody who's pre-ordered is going to help us design that so you know and we're discussing how that might go. Um, but yeah, one of the things is, one of my ideas is that we have kind of like uh, different sketches and, and you can kind of like take some pieces match. from the different sketches and mix oh, and match. Oh, that's cool. And, I and, like you know, it. We'll, we'll that's see, good marketing. Uh, we'll see if, <laughs> if people enjoy that. And um, so, yeah, we, we think it's it could be a really cool thing that there ends up being this whole Chimera army that, uh, that has been made <laughs> from this project. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. That, that's super exciting and uh, you know li like I said it, it it feels good to know and I'm, and I'm sure like as a company having like a capital campaign like this like getting an influx of money especially in a weird time right now in um, you know in post COVID economy or as I'm dubbing it the new economy mm -hmm. like having something like this I think is so much smarter because it, it allow again it allows us the 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 consumer to to speak with our dollar to really stand behind a company that we believe in and and I, I think that uh, the the lack of secrecy is going to be something that is going to pay off tenfold especially like I'm excited to see how these things are going to be uh, like the the pro progress as the sculpts are being made that that i am like thrilled for those are like my favorite parts of like mr rogers i love seeing how the sausage is made cool. yeah we're, we're excited to show Me that too. as well <laughs> <laughs> trying to try to figure out how to get a time lapse for the 3d printer so <laughs> coming up that's awesome. So is there any other things that you would like to uh to to tease for us today? Oh, I mean, I have all sorts of stuff here. So I mean, one thing that we haven't had a chance to talk about very much is the um the resin beast how it was canceled at yeah. a gone. Um, you know, we for this resin beast we designed all these brand new trophies. Uh, we've actually sculpted them and printed them. I'm I'm just showing the the art here. Um, but each category that we do is going to have its own trophy. And so I just wanted to remind people that we're planning on coming back to Adepticon next year. The Resin Beast is going to be there, uh, bigger and better than ever. Um, <laughs> and you know, so these are these are some of the the trophies that are uh, going to be unique for each oh of the categories. Um, and so, please come, bring your models, uh, get involved. You know, and and for us, the Resin Beast is a lot about. Um, just being involved, you know, you, you don't necessarily need to win. We're going to try and make it so that if you come, you're, you're going to have a good time. You're going to get feedback. Um, everybody, we've, we theme the resin beast as a dungeon crawl, right? So everyone who enters is participating in this dungeon crawl to kill the resin beast. So, you know, you come, you roll a D 20, uh, you see what happens to your character in your dungeon crawl. And, and so everyone gets to have a little bit of fun. 
Uh, Mitch will be one of the NPCs. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, Simon was the shady merchant. So. I love it. I love it. Well, um, I was I was so going to do like uh, I, I worked. I did the twins. As soon as I saw them at Warfare Weekend, I was like, that this is what I'm going to do. I had all these other creature caster things, but I was like, the new hotness is where I'm going to go. And I will be one of the first people to have painted this model. So I won't have a lot of influence from other people. I can kind of do my own unique take on it, uh, even though like I knew I wasn't going to win. I wanted to be part of that conversation specifically like it was going to be my way to meet like John Ninas and Sam Lenz and like I was using that as to get my foot in the door of meeting some of my painting heroes um, mm -hmm. and the, and you know COVID happened we got it canceled and so the, the podcast now has been that way to talk to these uh, you know these characters in the industry and um, and it's just so cool being able to, to see like how how they all respect you guys at the same level there's a, a an amount of reverence uh for for what you do and like that you know the fact that you do a thing like resin beast is crazy you know like like a three thousand dollar grand prize is nothing to sneeze at that's actually really huge especially for such a you know a, a cottage industry business as your own like how did you guys come across that uh that idea like how, how was that the number that you came to and uh and, and it's like... uh it's what we could afford without going totally broke no <laughs> <laughs> we, you know we as i said you know we see it as when we do marketing we want it to be community involved marketing and Everybody who comes, you know, if you have your entry in the Resin Beast, we're taking pictures of it. Um, we're showing all those pictures. We're sharing that with the community. It becomes a huge event for us. And Adepticon is a huge event for us. As Simon said, like, it's it's almost a, a pilgrimage for us because we don't it go is. to a lot yeah. of these big conventions. And Adepticon sure. is really, you know, even as individuals, Adepticon was the first big event that many of us attended. Like I'd never been to a convention that size before I went to Adepticon and, and just being able to interact with people, you know, um, listening to people talk about the models, you know, we, we try and make it so that there's a lot of models there that people can pick up. Right. So, so we have them assembled, people can pick them up and turn them around and, um, and, and people are like scared to do it. And, and, you know, and every <laughs> once in a while a bit gets knocked off and we're like, don't worry, don't worry. Like, that's what they're here for, you know? Um, sure. and, and it's like, just, it's super, uh, it's super exciting for us. It and it uses us with energy. It does, it, it, it really, <laughs> you know, gives us the motivation to, um, to Continue, keep going yeah. and keep doing these things. Right. And, um, and so we knew we wanted it to be a meaningful event and we're like, at, at what point um, at what point is this prize something that's really meaningful? And, and so, you know, that's really what we looked at. And, and it's, um, I think for us, we want to have more categories. We want to have a bigger prize pool. And it, it's just a question of um, what's sort of sustainable and, and, you know, what the what people's interest is in entering, right? So, like, the, the more people sure. who are entering, the more people who are part of it, um, the easier it is for us to justify that in, that increased expense of, of what that prize pool is going to be. And so, yeah, I think we, we wanted to make it super exciting and it did feel super exciting. I mean, our, our trophy, I think we maybe uh, <clears throat> made it too big. I think it's something like four kilograms. Oh my God. Like, we don't know how people are going to actually transport us <laughs> home if they win. Maybe we didn't think this through. Um, but uh, yeah, I've actually oh. got the the trophy here so this is like if you win the oh resin beast you, you have to carry this home with you right so oh um, my god maybe you we should like ship to... it next time and we have like right. a, a, a like a, just a version that we bring that like this is what you'll get it's probably a better a well better we did offer that to people if they were yeah. unable to transport it yeah. that we would yeah. that we would uh ship it out to them so yeah um but yes that's uh it's a big exciting event for the year and um and we wanted it to be really meaningful, right? So yeah, yeah. And he, that, that's one of my favorite parts is meeting all the different community um, spotlight people, painters and such. It's uh, you know, for me, it's like I always, I always love meeting painters of all different degrees and how inspired they are, right? And just, just being able to present these trophies to some of the best painters in the world is uh, so great. 
Well, it, it, it really does. Like I said, it speaks to the caliber of your guys' company. Uh, you know, the fact that all of you want to sit down and be a part of it. And uh, and 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 the goal is to still grow it. You know, it, obviously you, you aren't sitting sedentary, like looking at like, oh, we have made it. Like you guys are, are no, absolutely no. <laughs> pu- pushing. Sedentary. Pushing. <laughs> <laughs> So one of the things that I've uh, wanted to talk about, and I know we're getting close to like what I said we would we, we would be time wise, but one of the things that I I would love to see from a company like yours is um, like we have extremely sexy women demon models that are oh my god we got freaking dragons now, holy crap. Um, and I like all of the guys either are like totally rotten or like beefcake demons and um i was wondering if you guys thought about like like i'm like if we're gonna objectify uh the women figure as much as we are like where where is the line of where you're gonna take it for like a male aspect are you gonna do like like super angelic uh you know androgynous seraphim uh, where it, they do play a total different role, or is that something that you guys are considering as uh, uh, maybe a response? Because I've I've talked to a lot of people who want uh, more more sexy guys that aren't just like beefcake guys that are like you know like regular uh, you know pretty pretty boys in, in fantasy situations. Yeah, I mean it. <clears throat> so for us, it really depends on the faction that we're doing right so sure. um especially when we started out like a, the faction that we were getting the most sales from and which we had to as a company be like hey this is where our sales are um you know was was ecstasy faction of and course so sure. that's that's for sure gonna have you know the most um naked women and <laughs> that's what was selling a lot of models for us at that time um and it was it wasn't necessarily that it sells more it's just that it was up for sure like like we knew that if we did this we were going to sell the number of models that we needed to do the next thing right and so um so if you even look at like the history of where we were a lot of our a lot of those models were very were some of the first models we did because we're like hey these are these are (laughs) great sure thing models um so we we have that in that faction um but a lot of what we're doing is um depending on the faction, you know, we, we want to see a lot of different body types and a lot of different uh, physical appearances. Um, you know, so if you look at what we're doing with our uh, our sort of ruin faction, there is a lot more, um, you know, maybe not as sexualized body types inside that yeah. faction. So we got, sure. you know, the Lady of Anguish that's there. We've got the Queen of Ruin that's there. We just released the Atriarch set and we have the Paladin Um, paladin model in that which is I think sitting right here so this one is also a female model and a lot of people say they didn't even realize that it was a a female model so you know like we do want to see these different um, representations of what uh, what body is right or you know and and those things Um, and the queen of ruin is like such a cool model for that because it is like it's a relatable body like when you look at it it feels like a thing like a, like a, a a person that existed and has you know decayed past a certain point but like without being like completely like over the top on the, the like the gross aspect you know like it, i i love the way that the sexuality the, and oppress- oh, attractiveness wow. to her right so yeah 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 i i i, I I love looking at, at all those new models because they do they do push the boundary where you know like you wouldn't see you know kind of a, like the old older woman body type in there which I I really appreciate. God. So what's going on with the dragons? Like uh, I know dragons is where you started. Are we gonna see a return to dragons? Is that that part of the? It's been a the, big push. It's been a big push, right? So yeah, we love we're, dragons here we're team working too. really hard to release two new dragons. You know. Um, you can maybe tell that they're actually going to be interactive. So, um, and the the final version is actually much more interactive than this because this is, you know, sort of the art that we use to to see a lot of what's going on with the dragons. So we have to kind of make them a little bit more static. Um, but yeah, like 
this is going to be a thing. It's going to be a huge project, and we hope that uh, that we'll get the support for it. But there's going to be these two fighting dragons, um, and you'll be able to buy them separately, or you'll be able to buy them as part of like a diorama, a diorama basically. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's which the, the big goal for the dragons. Your your guys' like group purchasing is one of the smartest thing in the world because I think all the extras that come along with like buy the three matriarchs get this extra stuff uh, is like I find some of that extra stuff to be so enticing and um and it, yeah, we it, purposely it's really make it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and you don't really like push it like that's no. the interesting aspect. It's just kind of yeah. like do it and here's a really nice thing you know that yeah. land yap sort of uh customer service thing that i when i when i got my first one i was like oh this is awesome yeah i'm always gonna buy it like this yeah yeah and and that's what we're hoping for is to make it really appealing and then you know especially with the atriarchs like sometimes it'll have a model that you know maybe is not your favorite model but uh, when you get that set of three, but you do get the bonus, right? So it's like, yeah. and, and if you're like, oh, I just want those that single one, then then maybe you just get the single one. But yeah, um, so so it is there to kind of be like, hey, you you got the model that maybe you're like, I'm not 100% sure I want this model. We want to make sure we're you know rewarding you for for doing that, right? And and so yeah. that's part of it. I think um, a lot of people are surprised then, when they get that unwanted model in their hands, and, st and they're like, "Oh, this is actually pretty cool, right?" That's yeah. the experience <laughs> yeah. we want to give them. Turns out to be one of the coolest, their favorite yeah. model, you know, a lot of the time. So, yeah, so, yeah that's a uh, that's great feeling. And then, yeah, sorry, just before that, Heath, I was just this was um, our ruin infantry. So, so like we are planning on an even smaller scale of model, um, and our infantry again, we're you know, we have matriarchs, we have patriarchs, uh, which we're calling atriarchs when they, they are not part of the gender binary. Um, Sounds good. And we have, you know, the, um, so this is like our male ones. And, and there's going to be complete sets of both the males of the females of the infantry for all the factions is our ultimate goal, right? Is to, to be able to, you know, have this full representation. So, so representation is very important to Creature Caster. Um, as to whether, you know, in general, we want demons to be demonic. And I think even when you look at our, some of the, some of the demons that are, you know, maybe more objectification of, 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 you know, the female body, um, a lot of times they have very horrific aspects to them. And oh, absolutely. so, you know, like we, when we look at doing male bodies, a lot of that's going to happen as well because we're doing demons. Um, sure. But then, if you when we we do have plans to do a full angelic range of models as well, and Woo! and yes, you we could expect <laughs> those to be, um, you know, objectification of of a male body in some ways. If you want to look at it like that, you know, we we prefer not to see it like that. We prefer to see it as we're representing multiple body types and sure, sure, and, and we do it as appropriate to whatever whatever uh, you know genre or whatever faction or whatever concept we're developing. So yeah. you know that's. And we want people to to understand that that it's um, oh, I'm showing things that were secret. Uh, ah, there it is! <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that's incredible. Look at all those eyeballs. Oh that's, my god! Those tentacles are gonna be a pain in the ass. They are gonna be a huge pain in the ass, <laughs> Simon. I, I don't no envy you at all. <laughs> uh, well, it looks I'm, awesome. I'll do it. <laughs> I, I I appreciate the the fact that you are thinking about things like that, and you know, like you know, I always you know joke that uh, you know in the in the biblical lore, you know, Satan Lucifer was the most beautiful angel, uh, so it stands to reason that he's the most beautiful demon, uh, and uh, th those are aspects of, of like. If we're gonna play in those worlds, I would I would love to see them. You know, like beauty can be just as scary uh, as we've seen with, especially in like the uh, um, the ecstasy line. Some of those things are terrifying. Uh, you know, some of the the the, the Lady of Ruin uh, with the the wings. I mean, she is she is intense looking. And yeah, I, well, I, one of one of the things that we go for is really like familiar but strange, beautiful but yeah. Yeah, ugly, tender and brutal. <laughs> Like the contradictions combined together is one of our core focuses, right? So, 
Right. Well, and like the face of the the twins, like get rid of that stupid demon face. The the look of the the more human male face looking at the the female is like it's it's touching. And as I am sitting there with my, you know, nerd magnifiers, you know, like like sitting there just like staring at them in the eyes and I'm like just like, "Oh my god, you guys are like there's there's a a love and a bond there that is not often seen in models and stuff like that. Like, totally, totally. I actually kind of think about it when I embrace my girlfriend. Actually, I'm like, it's like a twin. So. <laughs> Don't tell her that. <laughs> oh my god! Let's only watch this video. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Well, well, I should probably let you guys get back to work. I really yeah. appreciate you taking the time sitting down talk with me and, uh, you know, showing off this cool artwork uh, and just like one being being like such a cool pillar of this community. You know, thank you guys so much for for all of that. Is there anything else you guys want to say before before we wrap up? I, I think just thank you. Thank you for for the interview. Um, thank you for letting us say hi to the community and uh, we appreciate everybody's support, and and hopefully we got lots more cool things as we go forward. Oh, Keith, I'm oh. pretty busy usually dur during my day day, but I always love meeting people involved in the community. So it was a pleasure to meet you, and I'm sure I'll see you around uh, like at one of the tournaments or conventions or something in the future. Oh, you and absolutely. Sorry for Simon's will. phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no worries. Hey, uh, you guys are busy, and uh, I will I will take ex uh, uh, everything that you guys will give me, no matter what. I appreciate it so much. So thank you all so much. Uh, I'll, I will be I'll be posting this in the Facebook group and tagging you guys online, and we'll we'll as Sam Lynn says, we'll boost the signal for all your cool stuff in the future. Thank you all so much. Thank, thank you. you take care. All you. right. Have a good day, guys. Bye. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Hobby Time in the Murder Basement. I so appreciate your support. If you want to see more hobby content, hop on over to twitch.tv backslash Heath Aldrich to see all of your fun hobby content streaming whenever I get a free chance. If you like listening to these episodes in more of a podcast form, I should be on all of your favorite podcasting apps. Make sure that you like and subscribe to me there. If you can, leave me a five-star review. I'd really appreciate it. Have a nice rest of your day, and we'll be talking to you soon.